if I have an object here, then if it doesn't have enough total energy, it's going to get stuck in this well. And if it does, it's going to burst out of that well and keep going down. It's kind of like what happens if you set a ball on a hill shaped like the potential energy function. So, what should happen when we have zero potential? Well, I mean, the particle is free to do whatever it wants. There's not, no hill pushing it this way or that way. And so, in classical mechanics, this is fairly easy, because you know zero is equal to ma, so a is equal to zero. And what does that mean? Well, the position solution has to be of the form vt, v naught t plus x naught, where these two are constants. Since any higher order terms are automatically equal to zero, there's no force pushing or pulling you around, it just has to be a constant velocity, right? If something is flying at a constant velocity and there's zero force on it, what's motivating it to change direction or velocity magnitude? Nothing. That's why it should stay constant. So, does quantum mechanics allow the same interpretation of the free particle? Well, let's try. A while ago, we covered the infinite square well, which looked something like this. Except these parts diverged off to infinity. And this part was exactly the same, zero. So, just as a reminder, let's try to solve this for the free particle. You get minus h bar squared over 2m multiplied by d squared psi dx squared is equal to e psi. Actually, I think we should go to back to the original equation, right? So, let's write the Schrodinger equation again. Not nah, fine. As a reminder, when we set this to zero, sorry, not this to zero, this is potential plus a constant, which means when we set this to zero, this gives us an equation of the form minus h bar squared over 2m d squared psi dx squared is equal to c psi. So then, because we have that d squared psi dx squared is proportional to psi, we can assume the onset psi is equal to e to the rx. So, what happens when we plug that in? You get minus h bar squared over 2m r squared, since you're taking the derivative twice. e to the rx is equal to c e to the rx. You cancel the exponential term on both sides out, and you eventually get r squared is equal to the square root. Sorry, r is equal to the square root. Wait, shouldn't that be positive? Oh, never mind, this is a negative sign. And you get I C over 2M H bar. And what does that mean? Well, at the end of the day, you're getting E to the I square root of C over 2M H bar X plus I another constant T. And so, is this solution normalizable? Well, what happens when we take the integral over the entire real line. Recall that taking the integral over the entire real line of a wave function should give us 1 if it's a valid wave function. Now, if it gives us a positive or negative constant, well, it can't be negative, so if it gives us a positive constant like this, then we can always just multiply it by 1 over the square root of a, Sorry, we can multiply psi by 1 over the square root of a to ensure it still follows the Schrodinger equation without breaking the rule that this has to be equal to 1. But there's a problem. What if the result is 0 or infinity? Obviously, multiplying by 1 over infinity makes no sense, and multiplying by 1 over 0 also makes no sense. So if the integral over the entire real line is either of those two, we call it non-normalizable, just as a review.
So what happens when we do this? Well, first, we ignore this part because, you know, it's not... We're not integrating over t, we're integrating over x. And then, how do you write the modulus of e to the i something squared? What's the modulus of e to the i square root of c over 2m h bar x? Well, this doesn't matter, because it's just a constant multiplier to x. And the modulus of e to the i x is always equal to 1. Uh, that's why this doesn't matter. And so when you square it, it's still going to be equal to 1. If you add on an amplitude, it's going to be equal to the amplitude squared. But no matter what, this is going to be a constant. So you're integrating from minus infinity to infinity of, well, this modulus is a constant. And hold up a second, what happens when we integrate a constant like this? Well, it's going to be... First, we have to figure out what we actually mean by this integral. It's actually the limit as b approaches infinity of minus b to b of this. And of course, if we do that, this gives us, since we're not integrating over a or anything, this part is just going to be b minus minus b, which unfortunately doesn't cancel out, but makes 2b. And the limit of to a squared b as b approaches infinity diverges, which means that a free particle doesn't mathematically exist in quantum mechanics. Nothing is free, but that's fine, because every single actual solution that is normalizable can be written as a power series of this non-normalizable solution.